If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that, like me, you have decided that gambling is a significant problem in your life. You've made the decision that you need to, and more importantly, that you want to address your gambling. You want to stop the damage it's doing to not only your finances, but to your relationships, possibly to your work, and the harm that you're causing to those people around you, those people that you purport to care about the most, but actually you're putting in harm's way because of this addiction. It's a great milestone. It's a point from which you can kick on and start to improve your life, start to see real change, start to form the basis of a long-lasting gambling recovery. However, at this moment, you're going to be calculating different strategies, different methods, different ways in which we can approach a recovery, different methods by which we can attack, treat, and ultimately slay this demon in our heads. What I want to talk about in today's video is the most fundamentally flawed strategy that I ever embarked upon. The one that not only had no long-lasting benefit to my recovery whatsoever, but actually, if anything, exacerbated and made worse the addiction that I had actually been planning to try and address. Firstly, let me just say hi. I hope you're keeping safe. hope you're keeping sane. A thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel. If you're new around here, then if you like this video, by the time you've watched a bit of it, then hit the subscribe button. Um, thank you to Graham, um, one of my oldest subscribers. Thank you to Gary as well, all the way from Canada, who have supported the channel by um, donating. Um, I didn't actually realise this, to be honest, guys, but there is a button underneath this video that says thanks, and apparently you can click on that and you can actually make a donation. Um, don't remember setting it up, but apparently it's there, so thank you to those people who have already donated. It's very, very much appreciated, and uh, yeah, aside from anything else, it just shows your appreciation and gives me a bit more motivation to continue making these videos. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is the most flawed, the most dangerous strategy I embarked upon upon one of my first efforts to get into a gambling recovery. As the title of this video and the thumbnail might suggest, that is the small stakes strategy, as I shall call it. Um, my gambling was predominantly done um, in bookmakers, on line, on online casinos, uh, in pubs, playing fruit machines. Basically, it was sort of digitized forms of gambling, so slots, roulette, not so much, but blackjack and other, other games of that nature, right? And one of the things I thought of was, right, okay, I'm going to wean myself off gambling. I'm not going to just stop cold turkey. Um, I'm going to wean myself off gambling. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself, you know, 20 quid or whatever. Um, and that will be my gambling money. I can use that. And if I lose it, I lose it. If I don't, I don't, you know, only gamble what you can afford to lose and all that sort of thing. And it is something that I see come up sometimes in the comment section. Um, people say, oh, well, all I do now is I play on, I don't know, arbitrarily 20p, right? Now, that might be a lot of money for some people. It might be a very, very small stake for others. So I'm going to deposit a small amount of money, and I'm just going to play on this small stake. And that will be my gambling fix. That will be, you know, my gambling budget. And that way, I'm never going to cause myself any real harm. Now, in principle... There is some logic to saying, well, actually, if I only lose what I can really, really comfortably afford to and won't make any impact on my life at all, then is gambling really a problem? But I think if we can do this, then we are fundamentally ignoring what is actually the underlying issue. Gambling addiction is not about being addicted to the wins or indeed the losses. Gambling addiction is based around the process of placing a bet, and then awaiting the outcome. Now, it is when we are awaiting that outcome that the dopamine is released, and that is what causes the psychological addiction. It's not the, you know, it's not the win. It's the promise of a potential win. If we start to bet lower stakes, we are feeding into this cycle of bet, wait, dopamine release, reward. We continue to feed into the cycle. However, what happens is because the outcome is has very little bearing on us whilst there is a small dopamine hit there it will not be on a par to what we're used to as, as addictive gamblers you know if you're used to playing at two pound a spin on the slots playing at 20p a spin on the slots yes it will be the same cycle yes it will be the same process but you won't be getting that same level of dopamine hit because you're not expected you know you don't have that same expectation as to what the outcome could potentially be so this isn't ultimately going to placate your addiction all you're doing, in, a, in effect, is poking the beast. You are awakening the urges. You are exacerbating the urges, but you're not placating them. The normal gambling session, as we know, would go something like this. We think we're going to have a gamble. We gamble, we gamble, we gamble, we win, we lose, we lose, we lose, we win, we lose. And then eventually, we get to a point where either A, 
quite commonly we've run out of money, but B, quite often we have had a session, we've had our fix. And as a example of this, and I'm sure if you gambled for any period of time you will relate to this, using a, a, a fob tea as an example, if you were to put 20 quid into a fob tea and you get a win almost instantaneously, be that a jackpot or a larger win or whatever, that would be to the non-addict a very, very satisfying, very happy point at which to leave your gambling session. However, as addicts, we can often continue to play beyond what is a positive net result because we haven't had our fix. We haven't actually placated the urge, which goes to show that actually what we're craving, what we're desiring is not the positive outcome that is being sold to us by the gambling promotion. The big win is not ultimately the outcome that we're after. The outcome we're after is sufficient cycles of risk, reward and dopamine to placate, to satisfy the urge in our head. If we're playing at low stakes, we are simply not getting that level of dopamine. We are awakening the beast. We are playing into the clutches of our urges, but we are in no way satisfying that beast in our head. So ultimately, we will leave a gambling session if we are able to leave our gambling session. I'm going to come on to that. Having lost our arbitrary amount of money that we've set ourselves as pocket money or gambling money or whatever, we will leave the gambling session probably with a stronger urge than we actually started. We've done nothing to placate the urge. We've extended out our gambling cycle. And what will happen ultimately is we will likely to go back more and more frequently, constantly chasing the buzz, chasing that craving to satisfy the urge in our heads. As I alluded to there, the second problem, which is the one we will all be familiar with, is the quick £20 fallacy. Okay, You go up to a machine, uh, or you go online and you deposit a quick £20. I can, I can afford to lose this, that's fine. So you go on, you deposit your 20 quid, and you start playing at what for you is a low stake, regardless of what game you're playing. Very, very quickly, you will notice that you're not getting the satisfaction that you crave, and you will eventually up the stake. It happens almost, it happened for me anyway, almost every time. I would have my few token spins to play into the idea that this was my strategy, this was my method, and satisfying myself that I could play at lower stakes and enjoy it. But very, very quickly I would become bored, and I would up the stakes, and I would up the stakes, and eventually you just end up in any other gambling session. It could have been any other gambling session in any other day, not this newfound, fangled strategy for you know damage limitation. It simply was just another gambling session. And that leads me quite nicely on to point three. If you have decided, if you have made the conscious decision, conscious decision in fact, that you need to quit gambling and that you want to do something to address your gambling. Most importantly, you want to change your life, you want to improve your life and you want to stop this cycle. If you made that decision, then you need to stop gambling. You are merely extending the pain by continuing to gamble in any form, in any, at any level. To use an analogy, because, hey, I love an analogy, right? If you were an alcoholic, if you were alcohol dependent, if you had a severe problem and you were at the risk of you know, killing yourself or you were at the risk of losing your family or whatever, would you recommend walking into a pub and drinking half a lager? You normally drink 10 pints a day, but no, you, you want to, you're going to walk into a pub and you're going to sit there and you drink half a lager. No, you're not going to suggest this. Why? Because yes, you may for 10, 20 minutes, be able to sit there and sip that half a lager, believing that you are partaking in some sort of recovery strategy. However, once that's gone, you'll order another half, and you'll probably order a pint. And then again, you're back in the same cycle because you are awakening the addiction, but you are not placating it, you're not satisfying it. The only way to satisfy the addiction is to play it through to the end, and the end is the damaging part. So we cannot partake. Now, I will, of course, put a caveat on this and say if you are alcohol dependent, the medical advice is that you don't go full withdrawal. Okay, but that's advice for someone who knows a hell of a lot more about that sort of shit than me. And the bottles of spirits in the background, I, uh, you know, the, the irony is not lost on me. Um, it was my birthday recently and they were presents. You'll see that actually all sealed, still sealed, I think, apart from the grey goose, which I think has gone down that much. Anyway, I digress already. 
So, if you are still gambling in any capacity, you are literally just keeping that door open for yourself. Now, if look, if you're not ready to quit gambling, if you don't want to stop, okay, that's fine. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I've always said, look, I'm not here to preach. I've gambled for most of my adult life. I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. But if you're leaving a door ajar to gambling, be that at a perceived lower level, you know, a safe level of gambling, if there is such a thing, which I can almost assure you there isn't, then you're leaving a door ajar. You're letting yourself back in. You're giving yourself that option. Exclusions, putting blocks in place, gam stop, all that sort of thing. That is a way to stop gambling. Trying to scale it down, trying to, you know, trying to wean yourself off using small triggers is possibly the worst strategy you can possibly undertake. And uh, yes, I'm speaking, of course, from very valued experience. You know, it's uh, it's something I sort of promised myself. I, I sort of said, you know, I'll just have the odd 10, 20 quid here and there. And it don't work. In my experience, it does not work. And if it works for you, then great. But I would suggest that if you can consistently stick to a very small deposit and you're satisfied by small deposits, small stakes, and you don't get any further urges, then it might be that you don't have the problem of gambling that maybe you perceived yourself to have. Because I don't believe this could ever be a long-term successful strategy for anyone with a gambling addiction. Um, I'm going to do a sort of Q&A video soon. Um, a lot of you guys have been posting comments, which I don't often get the chance to come back uh, to. So I'm going to go scroll, scroll through, compile a list of questions that you guys have asked, and I'll do a Q&A video very soon. If you have any other questions, post them underneath this video, and I will do my best to answer quite a number of them in the next video. Until then, have a good weekend, stay safe, stay sane, and I shall speak to you all soon. All the best.